hello everyone and welcome back to another video and today we have a phone here it's called infinix smart 8 okay this came for repair from another technician to me the phone stopped working and he has tried his best and the phone is not switching on so i want us to go into the phone and see how we can repair this phone all right if you're interested in our line class Please make sure you DM us on the numbers on the screen and we are going to discuss how we are going to begin the training with you. And if you have any question, all right, during the course of the training, we have a platform where we answer all your questions. Let's go right into the video. So I'm going to insert a charger from my charger meter right into the phone and pay close attention at the readings on the charger meter. It is drawing 0 0.5 amps all right right here 0 0.5 milliamps you can call it that way all right let's put back the cable you can see 0 0.5 milliamps right there so that is a very bad sign regarding this phone and when you get this reading on your charger meter what does it mean to you as a technician what does this reading, what does this symbolize, what does this signify? If you want to know more about the readings, please come to our online training and we are going to train you on the readings and the meanings on your charger meter and also your DC power supply. Please join our online training and we are going to teach you more of this, all right? Now, let's take a voltage reading of the battery okay remember i was trying to power on the phone but it wasn't powering on so let's get a multimeter and put our multimeter on dc reading mode dc reading mode is a mode where you can take voltage reading of the battery of, of the current flowing through in your mobile pcb all right, for more information on how to use multimeter, please join our online training and we are going to teach you all these things. Now, the reading on the multimeter is 3.2 volts right there. All right, so the next thing we are going to be doing is to power on this phone with our DC power supply. The voltage of the battery was too low. We can use the DC power supply to power on the phone. So, powering on the phone now. And the phone is powering on, but it's stuck on 0 0.14. That is not a good sign. That would never power on the phone. That means this phone is stuck on 0 0.14. That's 1.5 right now. As you can see, this phone is not powering on guys this phone is not powering on so now when our dc power supply does not power on this phone it could only mean that there is a problem on the pcb all right so let's go into the video improper and let's troubleshoot where the problem on this phone is so getting that type of reading on your charger meter and also on the dc power supply the first thing we need to do is to do physical inspection. Now, I always tell you that physical inspection is very, very important in this line of work. You inspect the PCB for bonds, for corrosion, for, you know, any abnormalities on the PCB. Now, getting a multimeter, I've done physical inspection, I can't see anything. Now, let's take readings of uh, the PCB. So I'm reading all the components on this PCB for shorts. All right, I'm looking for shorts, okay? All right. Now on this capacitor, there is a short on this capacitor. This is how it looks like when you have a short on a capacitor, all right? If you want to learn how to know more about this, please join our online training and you're going to be trained on how to uh, use your multimeter to troubleshoot efficiently 
now we've gotten another shot right here that is the second shot on this side all right this is the secondary line all right so um we have two shots right now two shots circuit i mean on the capacitors all right so let's continue reading other capacitors right the capacitors from the cpu side i read the first one is fine now this is the second one all right and the second one is reading short the second one is reading short to the ground pay close attention i'm going to read it again right now okay 0 0.002 voltage drop that's a that's a sign of a full shot on that capacitor next to the cpu i hope you guys are seeing it right now all right that's a full shot on the capacitor so now let's move on to the next thing and since we've gotten short on the secondary line we are going to remove this shield and also um, take more readings on the um, other sections as well which is the power ic section and also the ram section so putting your multimeter on dialed mode let's continue the troubleshooting troubleshooting is not something easy okay so sometimes this can take you two hours to three hours to to be able to complete the job all right so now i'm measuring the capacitor next to the power ic right now and this capacitor is short that makes it how many capacitors right now that makes it four four shorted capacitors right now okay continue the troubleshooting checking the capacitors on the other sections Shall I, this is the ram section checking the capacitors around here okay and this capacitor is short as well so now this is the fifth capacitor that will be shorting on this pcb according to the multimeter all right now this capacitor right here if you take a closer look is having one side of it corroded all right or burnt you can see that let's say corroded anyway okay so if you look at this capacitor it's looking very nice all right now let's see this capacitor was also shorting but it's looking so good as well this one right here is also short they're looking nice the one right here by the cpu is also looking clean and okay so we are going to take out this one that is looking bad we'll take it out <clears throat> and we are going to take another reading all right we are going to take a reading of this capacitor and i want you to pay close attention at the reading on that capacitor that we removed and this is showing that the capacitor is having a full shot this capacitor is having a full shot now let's take readings of other components that were shorting all right this is one of them it's no more shorting all right now that pad where we took the capacitor that was bad from taking the reading of the gnd is reading properly the other side is also reading properly that means there's no more short on that side let's check the other capacitors that were shorting before okay if you want to learn more about this you see it's no more shorting if you want to learn more about this thorough troubleshooting please join our online training all right it's affordable for you all right you are going to learn a lot of secrets in mobile phone repair so all the capacitors that were shorting were no longer shorting on this pcb now let's try to power on the device it is always very important that you replace any capacitor that you remove on any pcb all right please make sure you replace please don't ask me in the comment section please can i replace that capacitor that is bad please you need to know that you need to remove it you need to replace it with a good one and your job is done powering on the phone let's see if it works and the phone is switching on 
troubleshooting is as easy as that once you know the basics all right then you'll be fine with troubleshooting i hope everyone has learned a lot from this video and i hope this video has taught you a lot of new things that you do not know all right so we found the short circuit on the secondary line thank you so much for watching this video see you in my next video peace